Welcome to the Revolve Recap Weekly Podcast, where we help the members of Revolve Church deepen their connection to God, His family, and His mission. Like always, my name is still David Bruce McCumber Jr. And my name is William John Lackey. Thank you, William John. You're that's welcome. a good that's a good American it's a good name. Strong name. Yeah, I feel like like if we were opening a history book, it'd be like William John Lackey. W. J. Lackey. Killed the Brits. Whoa. And we're in a history book, like the the yeah, history. history book is very violent. Oh, wow. Well, your sermon was history, very violent. History's written in the blood of oppression, David. Speaking of violent, how about that sermon yesterday? But we're not there yet, Bill. We're jumping ahead. My nope. goodness. Bill's like, we're... All you do is jump ahead and ruin my day. Well, so then, Bill, why should people listen to today's episode based off our last 30 seconds of conversation? Because David and I are both in bad moods. You would think we'd be in better moods. We just ate that hoagie. We didn't eat a hoagie. You made it sound like we shared a hoagie. Well, I mean, I ate a hoagie. You had a little sandwich on rye. Sandwich on rye. Yeah. And you know what? It was delicious. And you're still in a bad mood. No, I'm a little less of a bad mood. But well, people people love drama. If anything, if Netflix taught me anything, people love drama and tension. So there's going to be a lot of drama today because yep. Bill and I are in bad moods. If we were a Friends episode, it would be called the one where they were both in bad moods. Okay. Because well, all their episodes begin with the one. The one oh, really? where The one where there's uh-huh. a guy lawn mowing outside of the revolve. Is that what that is? <laughs> I thought it was someone flying a little Cessna. Did you hear about that guy that jumped out of the plane? A lot of people jump out of planes, David. What are you talking about? He was a pilot, and it's like I just saw it on YouTube this morning, and a guy jumped out of a him and the him 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 and the co pilot <laughs> him him and the co pilot were flying, and he jumped out of the plane, and the wheel fell off, and there it's, it's which still, happened first, the wheel fell off or he jumped out first? They don't know. They don't know. Huh? It's just it just it was breaking news this morning. I saw it on YouTube. Where was it? In the sky. Oh, my gosh. I don't know. Florida, Jeez, probably. Bill, why are you in a bad mood? All right. What's the question of the day, Billy? Question of the day is about regrets. No regrets. And what I want to know so is what is a regret? Something that you did which you regret. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. I have some caveats here. Okay. Something you did which you regret. And I don't want to hear something like serious. It has to be something like, you know, whatever it is. Like, I don't want to be like, well, you know. So what's, what's the I question? The, what's the, like something you regret doing, like a purchase you regret or something you regret. Just tell me something you regret. Don't make it too heavy though. Keep it light. Oh, geez. Okay. Uh, I regret. Why'd you laugh? Well, because all I could think about is I wanted to say like coming to work today. Yeah. Hanging out with you. Oh man. Joining Revolve. All <laughs> those things. All those things. Gosh. I know. You said keep it light. I'm all sorry. All right. Come on. What's your regret? Man, what's a regret? I'm trying to think of maybe a travel thing. You know, we went to Egypt and we didn't see the pyramids. <laughs> Gina brings that up all the time. You and I were, and it was on the itinerary for us to go see the pyramids. But everybody had Kung Flu. And. Can I say that? No, you can't. Everybody had COVID-19. Yeah. But no, Bill and I were in Egypt. And I feel like the pyramids are one of those things that you will never see again. And especially I don't now think... that Despicable Me stole them. Yeah. So that would probably be a regret. But you know what? I don't live... In the moment, I, I wanted to go home and be with my wife. We were getting ready to move to Greece. And everybody was sick. Mm-hmm. And at the time, it was a... It was the best decision. And it probably still is. But, you know, it would be cool to see the pyramids. But... I mean, what is it? just a bunch of rocks? Yeah, piled up. When we first got married, Gina and I bought like a cheap timeshare, and oh yeah, it was a bad move. And we had to, like, then they went bankrupt, and another company bought them, and it just like started to be bad, bad news bears. And we had to actually like hire a lawyer to donate it. Wow. So like, whatever. I think we spent like. I, we must have spent over a thousand dollars just having to get rid of it. Yeah. See, but those types of things are hard because you learn lessons, lessons from. Too, yeah. 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 So I had a bass guitar, a Warwick thumb bolt on, which I sold for like seven hundred fifty dollars back probably fifteen years ago, and now you can't touch a used Warwick thumb for probably under two grand. 
Oh, I got another regret. I got so Man, many regrets. He's got so many regrets. I Bill, played this card this game. segment is over. But <laughs> I played this card game growing up called Magic the Gathering because I am a nerd. And um, oh yeah, I know where this is going. And my I became a follower of Jesus, and my sisters read this book, and it was talking about how all that stuff is from the devil, which I don't believe. I had all these cards and they were like, uh, I hadn't used them in like three years and they were like, came to my room. They're like, you got to rip these up. Yeah. And Those I was like, Christian now. And I was like, I do. And they're like, this is how the devil gets you. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't want the devil to get me. No, you don't. And so they stayed in my room until I ripped them up. And one of the, one of the cards I ripped up was a, a mint mox emerald, which I'm currently on eBay and it's $25,000. Wow. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. And even another one's twelve thousand. Holy smokes! One hundred twenty. Wow. Yeah, that is a regret. Yeah. So I guess I did rip a twenty-five thousand dollar bill in half. Well, no regrets. I got Bill. I'm the real Bill. Oh, thanks. That was depressing. Wow. Yeah, that was a real pick me up. All right. Yep. If you have any um, regrets, if you have regrets. any purchasing regrets, put them in the comments below. We'd Do you love have any to. Tattoo regrets. Uh, tattoo regrets. No. No, not really. All right, fine. The one on my ankle is really ugly. You mean the one of the, of the rose, the little rose with the dolphin on rose. it? It's not a rose. It's a weave. <laughs> it's got a it's really ugly. He's but got a little dolphin jumping over a rose. But it's like, it's such a small part of my body. I'm such a big guy. <laughs> you know, it's like if you lived in like a mansion and it was like the the light switch didn't work in your third bathroom, you don't really worry about it. Yeah, that's, that's true. what I think. It's like I got so much body space, it's just a little tattoo. It's a little rose. All right, so we're going to take a quick break and we're going to give an announcement here. Yeah. So stick around, we're going to we're switching up a little bit. We're going to we're changing it. We're going to instead of our musical jamming, we're going to do a musical what's up at Revolve. All right. So, so David, what is up at Revolve? But well, this week, the Vances are going to be with us, Christian and Elena and their boys, and they are going to be visiting. And on Sunday, Christian will be preaching for us, delivering the word Ooh. of God. And if you want to see Christian and Elena, you better make sure you're there on Sunday there, Buster, because we're not doing any sort of uh, hangout time with them. Their, their schedule's pretty limited. So come on Sunday, see Christian and Elena, and uh, we'll see you then. No Back regrets. to you. Back to you, Billy. Thank you, David, for that. What's up, Pepperball? Yep. Appreciate it. It's time for looking up, guys. Looking up. Sermon overview slash summary. Shoo. Were you here yesterday at the church on the deck because Billy brought Psalm 137? And I would have to say it was a little, it was saucy. It was a saucy one. I don't know if saucy is a word I would use. It was graphic. It was graphic. PG-13. Mm-hmm. So there were some topics that were brought up that were TV a little... 14, maybe. Yeah, they were a little uh, little heavy, a little, little graphical, but that's the world we live in, and that was a little bit about the sermon was, you know, what are, are we offended? See, last week when Breton preached on Psalm 51, I was like, I felt this need to mourn my sin and be mm-hmm. saddened by my sin. And now uh, Psalm 137 made me, I need to be like angry at sin, you know, like not be so like when I hear things on the news, they should, they should get me angry. Not just like, well, this is the world we live in. That's what happens when you play Grand Theft Auto. Right. But it's like, no, this is a sinful world and we need to be sharing the, gro- the, the cross, the gospel and the cross, the cross. with the world, the cross the gospel and the cross with the world around us. So we need to be, you know, we need to be a little angry when we see things messed up in the world like this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you're listening to it, Bill's making a face of anger. He's got his angry eyebrows. Oh, they're so angry. So, but that was a tough topic, Bill. And I thought you did a good job. I texted all the elders this morning when I re listened to it and just said that I'm glad we go to a church that doesn't gloss over some of the hard things, Hmm. but um, you know, kind of hit some head on and I feel like our, our people are better prepared to, uh, in, engage our culture because of it. So thank you, Bill. Oh, you're welcome, David. Thank you. So how would you take that sermon and how can we apply it? Because we don't want to be dashing babies on rocks. Mm-mm, don't do that. Don't do that. If that was your big takeaway. 
You, you had a bad takeaway. You may want to re-listen to the sermon, but what what are some of our takeaways from this week's sermon, Billy? So looking up in terms of your relationship with God, I think not to callous your heart towards sin hmm. is um, don't be desensitized to sin. You know, so it's okay to be bothered by sin when you see terrible things happen in the world. Don't just shrug your shoulders and become apathetic. I think it's easy to be apathetic because we can be desensitized. And then the other thing is don't insulate yourself Ooh. and live in ignorance. I think that sometimes it's like, we're like, hear no evil, speak no evil, see no evil. And I just don't want to talk about it. I don't want, and I've had, I have people say that to me where they're like, I don't want to talk about this right now. This, I, this, this conversation is upsetting me. And it's like, well, I understand it's upsetting you, you know, but like well, maybe you shouldn't abortion be triggered. is a why, real thing. Why are you triggering people, Bill? Well, maybe you shouldn't be so triggered. There should and be so, a trigger warning before this. No, there's no trigger warning. I should have brought my revolver oh again. Oh my gosh. Why do you, it's not that kind of podcast. <laughs> No, so I think the idea is don't be desensitized, but also don't be overly sensitized. Like David and I were talking about before, how, um, like when you go overseas, like there's things that are just part of life. Infant mortality is part of life. Getting sick is part of life. I think sometimes in our own culture, we're like desensitized to sin, but then we're overly sensitized to stuff like death. So like yeah. your grandma dies when she's 95 and you're like, oh. <gasps> She was so young. Yeah. It's she like was she so wasn't young. that young. She was almost a hundred. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But like we're so we're shocked by the things we shouldn't be shocked by, and then we're not shocked by the things that should be shocking. Yeah. So we kind of have it upside down. So that's looking up. Looking in, um, you know, like for some people yesterday, that was probably really hard. You know, if you had assault in your past or if you had hardships in your life, um, you know, maybe yesterday was really difficult. And if you know somebody who had a difficult upbringing or a difficult experience, you know, the Bible says to weep with those who weep, mourn with those who mourn. And so I think it's a really natural thing to reach out to friends who maybe yesterday was hard for them. And then the third thing is this, instead of just getting angry at the news, we're not just saying, well, get angry. That's not what I'm saying. Instead of just getting angry uh, about the news, get on your face, pray for spiritual revival, you know, ask the Lord to convict you of sin, confess, repent, plead with God for his, um, you know, his work to go forward. Yeah. I've really, um, the last year have been really deliberate about not watching the news because I was getting so angry. Hmm. And, uh, you know, I think what you were saying to not, you know, uh, insulate yourself is, uh, was, was, was kind of, you know, when you just said that, it made me think that I need to be aware of what's going on in the world. I can't just stick your head in the sand. Right. And, uh, you know, we're really blessed here in Cape May County. We are, we don't have the same issues and things that you see like in New York city and right. And that kind of stuff. But just because of that, we, we need to still be aware of what's going on. So that was really good. So hopefully, you know, you left yesterday or left Sunday, whenever you're listening to this with, you know, this idea of, of balance, you know, we need to get, um, upset about sin, but vengeance is mine, right. says the Lord, you know, so we don't need to have vengeance, but then we also don't need to be overwhelmed. Like the sky is falling. Right. You know? Right. So it really is about balance. Yep. And ignorance is not bliss. No, no. All right. Well, we are going to take a quick break and get another what's up with revolve with old Billy. Billy one shoe. Billy one. You only have one shoe on? No, I have two on, but it just seemed like a good name. All right. How about how about Billy update Billy? This is I got the traffic update for Billy One Shoe. We got a big screamer. I don't know what's a yeah. traffic term. <laughs> now you got a pile up on thirty seven. Pile up on thirty two. So much carnage. <laughs> don't All be right. desensitized to it. All right. Yeah, that's okay. true. That's true. Thanks, so, Billy. Yeah, this is update here. Um, Lower Cape May Regional. We talked on Sunday briefly about how it looks like we're going to be going to Lower Cape May Regional. Our projected date for transitioning is September 25th, which is also when we'll switch to our winter time of 10 a.m. instead of 9 a.m. And so tomorrow, Tuesday, the 2nd, we have a meeting at 9.30 a.m. to walk through. It's just crossing some T's, dotting some I's, checking some boxes. But so far, everything looks like it's going to be positive going forward. And so um, the prices will be reasonable. 
not free, but it should be reasonable. And so we're looking forward to exploring this option for the next school year. Thank you, Billy, for that update. We are on to our Q&A segment of the show. I have a lot of Q and A's this week. Uh, when you when you when you do the when you bring the when you bring the uh, the controversial topics, you get some Q and A's. Mm. Yeah, so I'm gonna try to word this correctly. This is worded a little wordy for me, but I'm gonna try my best. I'm, okay. a, I'm a good reader, Billy. No regrets. Because I went to LCMR. I I have confidence in you, then, All David. Right. It was right and good. For the psalmist to pray with hate for God's vengeance to come. But now, post-Jesus, should we pray in the same way? So I'm guessing this question, it's, it's saying it was okay at the time for the psalmist to pray for hate with a hateful mindset for vengeance to come. But now we're post-Jesus, we're post the cross, the gospel, is it okay to still pray the same way? Is Je- that the way you're understanding that question? Well, Jesus says to pray for those who persecute you. He doesn't say how to pray for them. So, oh, no. So, and I think that I understand the question, and I think that your summary was accurate. I think we need to we need to remember a couple key plumb lines. One is the Bible says, "Be angry and do not sin." It doesn't say, "Don't be angry." Um, It says, don't sin in your anger, right? And so don't sin in your anger. Two, um, we know we're commanded to love our enemies, but what what is love? Baby, don't hurt me. What a great song. Don't hurt me no more. What What is is love? love? So, yeah, Dave is rolling his eyes, but what is love? Love is not acceptance. Love is something different. Jesus demonstrated love to his enemies by dying for them, right? But Jesus doesn't love the kingdom of Satan. And I think this is one of those falsities that we have. You know, it says very clearly in the scriptures, God abhors evil. He despises. He hates. He cannot tolerate. Like, he doesn't just love everything. Um, God demonstrates love to that to the things that he hates by dying for it on a cross. Um, But there's a difference between demonstrating love and loving someone versus like being in love. And so I think that, you know, if you say, well, I'm loving my enemies and therefore I'm keeping my mouth shut. That's not love. Um, Oh, and, and sin is destructive. Right. And you know, it was like God wanted the Canaanites for 400 years to turn around, but their sin was destructive. Yeah, and and you think about it from that perspective. Like, if you have a kid who you know is addicted to meth, yeah, right, and you're like, I'm not saying anything because I'm just being loving. Yeah, like that's not love. That's not like love love is love is to like help them get clean. You know what I mean? And so, love your enemies um, doesn't mean approve of what they do. And then the third thing we know says pray for those who persecute you. Okay. So you're supposed to be angry and not sin. You're supposed to love your enemies, which doesn't mean approving them um, or being silent. And we're supposed to pray for those who persecute us. In Revelation, we see that the persecuted pray for justice. Like they're, I just finished reading the book Revelation this past week. And, you know, they're crying out, how long, oh Lord, how long until you rain down vengeance upon those who, who killed us, the martyrs on the martyrs. throne, yeah. right? Um, in Revelation... One of my favorite passages in Revelation is when they're pouring out like the bold judgments of God's wrath and all of the angels are worshiping God and they're singing songs. Yeah. And so they're worshiping as God's wrath is poured out. Like that's just so far into our pop culture Christianity idea. Yeah. But if you were, if you were to think about, oh man, it's like, it's, you you think about, I'm trying to, I don't want to be too graphic, but it's like when you see justice being served, if you had a kid who was abused and on the day their abuser is convicted you would celebrate yeah you would be like justice is being served yes Yes. so there is some sort of joy in 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 justice well and i think if, if you want to think about it from a general revelation perspective it's like you can look out on this beautiful 
lush green mountain and be like, that is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then it could erupt as a volcano and you're like, whoa. Yeah. And both of them are awe inspiring for different reasons. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I think this is how we pray. I'm sorry. One, we pray for people to repent. We pray for people to repent. Like we talked about the other day, if someone repents, then justice is served because Jesus received their justice. Amen. So one, first and foremost, we pray for people to repent. Two, we pray for God to break our heart for sin so we aren't cold towards it and we don't like aren't really angry about other people's sin and then dismissive about our own, Mm -hmm. right? Three, we pray for God to replace my anger with pity. I think that that's one thing. It's like, if I have an enemy, I pray for my enemy's salvation. And as I pray for them, God changes it from anger to pity. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then the last thing is we pray for wisdom with how do we love those who've harmed us? Because I used to get this question all the time when I did my Ask Pastor Bill column, where people would ask about how do you honor or respect an abusive parent? And it's like, it doesn't mean you just let them abuse you. Like, that's not how you love and honor an abusive person. Like, sometimes the best way you honor them is by not empowering their sin and yeah. giving distance. And so I think that we pray for wisdom. How do I love this person? But the point is, you pray first and foremost for their salvation. I lift up holy hands and pray. You know, like it says in First Timothy 2, to pray for leaders and everybody in power and these kinds of ideas. Pray for their salvation. Um, trust that God is going to do what is right. But I reject this idea that like you, you can't have the, what you described. Like if someone murders your child, like you're not going to be like, I just really feel bad for them. Like, no, an injustice was done. Yeah, You know what I mean? And so, yeah, you can pray for their salvation and you can pray that God would help you to forgive them. Like those are all things that you should be praying but like, let's not pretend with some kind of falsity that you're not going to be mad about it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hopefully you can release that anger yeah. to the Lord. And so you have to hear what I'm saying. I'm giving you permission to have emotions. Yeah. But don't be controlled by your emotions. That's a good summary, Billy. Good job. You're a, you're good. One shoe, Billy. One shoe, Billy. That was a good. I always said, Billy, you're good at taking complex thoughts and breaking them down to make them easier to, to digest. It's so. I'm a simple man. Like the Leonard Skinner song. What a great song. Isn't That's that what, what Jerry wanted us to play? Mama told me. Yeah. Isn't that what Jerry wanted us to play? Jerry this Collins. He just wants us to play Simple Man. He wanted Caleb to do this. He's like, I want you guys to sing Simple Man. And I want Caleb to just shred that guitar solo. We still haven't done that. Let's we, do it. Let's do it. All right. So how do you think violent and graphic TV shows and movies contribute to the numbness towards sins, devastating wake. Um, yeah, this is, I, yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, it, I mean, yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel. Yeah. I'm, you know, I remember when I was in college and it's gotta be amplified now. I remember when I was in college, they talked about how like in the seventies, um, a young man would have seen, whatever it was, a thousand acts of violence by the time he was 18. And because of video games and movies, like for our generation, it was like by the time you turn 18, you've seen over a million acts of violence. Yeah, that's like one night of playing Fortnite. Right. Yeah. And so it's got to be even more now, like millions and millions and millions. And so, of course, I think one of the reasons I personally think that war right now is so catastrophic is because we're so desensitized to it. So like you can be in a room on the other side of the globe driving a drone mm-hmm. and you're just you're just shooting blips on a screen. Yeah. But like you're mo- you're emotionally distant from the fact that those could be children. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's like a very strange thing. And so like I said before, I think we're totally desensitized to violence. I think we're desensitized to um, sexual sin. And I don't just mean sexual sin in terms of things that are like terrible, like rape. I think we're desensitized to divorce. I think we're desensitized to adultery. I think we're desensitized to uh, premarital sex. 
Yeah. I think we're desensitized towards alternative lifestyles. All of these things we're desensitized to. Um, and so I think that there's a lot of areas where we're desensitized. But then going back to what I said earlier, then we're overly sensitized or o- overly sensitive in other areas that are really weird, like where we have like safe zones at our colleges because we get so upset. Yeah. And so it's like we're not bothered by 600,000 abortions, but then we're really bothered if someone uses the wrong pronoun. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, you got to like figure out what you should be mad about. Yeah. Like, cause that's really backwards. I saw this thing where like there was some school and it was like this, these like doctors and like all these like pre-med students walked out of a, uh, a seminar of someone who was, you know, a pro-life speaker. And it's like, if you can't listen to someone who disagrees with you, yeah. you're a baby. Yeah. Like just at least listen yeah. to it. You don't have to agree with it, but listen to it. But then you're willing to do an abortion. Yes. You know? Just to make a point. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, um, yeah. Uh, I don't think, yeah, we could talk about this for a long time, but it really is. I mean, I would think even with TV Be shows. careful little eye, what you see. Yeah. Careful little lie, what you see? Is that a Sunday school song? I, I, I feel remember. like it is, but yeah. But I would say even with like television shows, with like, you know, like the whole bumbling father, yeah, like yeah. whole thing is like, well, dad's an idiot and kids know. Like if you watch like any Disney show, it's like mom and dad are idiots and the kids know everything. Well, Steve talks about that all the time. If I don't have cable, but if you have cable, watch every commercial. It's like, dad's a dummy. Good thing mom is here to save the day because yeah. dad is a giant idiot. He's like, what is this, a sponge? Yeah. Like, da- good thing mom's here because yeah. dad's a total worthless guy. So from the top to bottom, yes, we are desensitized and influenced by culture. So All right, let's, what do we do about it? What do we do about it? That should be a whole think, other podcast. I think you got, I mean, we joke about it, but think about whatever is good and noble and honorable and trustworthy. We, jo- we, don't, and, we don't ever joke about that. Well, we just were saying, be careful of oh, okay. what you see. Yeah. You know, but I think it is true. It's like, you got to watch the thought. What does Jesus say in the Beat, in um, Sermon on the Mount? You know, if the eye to your, if your eye is bad, you know, the idea being if like the window to your soul, if the things that you feast your mind on. If you're feasting your mind on the wrong things, then you're going to be desensitized to it. You know, like I was saying to David earlier that I lost my set, my taste for certain music, um, like a lot of classic rock, because so much of it is about sex. And it's like, I just don't feel like listening to this. Yeah. Like, I just don't feel like listening to a, like people sing a bunch of songs about having one night stands. Mm-hmm. And it's like, we, we, we don't think about it because we're like, oh, it's Led Zeppelin. And it's like, no, dude, this song is about sleeping with people. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, I don't need to fill my mind with that. That's good. So Billy burned all of his Doobie Brother albums. Man, the Doobie Brothers burned them. Burned them albums. All right, so we are gonna uh, wait. No, you should. We got one more announcement, bro. Yeah. You ready? I'm ready. What's up, Pat from Paul? All right, so we are seeing a lot of movement in Southeast Asia. We got a uh, update from our ministry partners there, and if you guys remember, a few months ago we did a a prayer push during uh, Ramadan to pray for movement um, specifically in Southeast Asia for um, some movement against uh, within these Muslim communities. And we just got an update that their recent trip out to one of the islands, they had 29 families who were open to, um, to reading more about God and, and possibly starting a discovery Bible study. So that that's like mind blowing. Like when we, when we've gone on our trips, we were maybe one or two families, but to, to hear 29 families, that's mind blowing. And that's a real answer to prayer. So yeah. we're just giving God the glory on some of the breakthrough that we are seeing with our ministry partners in Southeast Asia. So thanks, David. Keep praying. Yep. I think the, you know, if you're going to summarize the whole podcast, it's pray. You know, yeah. what do you do about your enemies? You pray. What do you do about the state of the world? You pray. Just keep praying. That's what our biggest weapon in this fight against things that are unseen is our faith and our prayers and you know listen david if you enjoy this podcast let us know and you got feedback let us know you want to bring us blt bring it by mondays at noon that's good you have anything you want to add oh that guy this is a guy walking by right now i think he's eating a blt 
He should have brought it into us. Not for me. All right, guys. Well, we hope you had a great um, week. We hope you're having a great week. And yeah, when you're when you watch the news tonight, say a prayer afterwards. Pray for your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Yeah. So, and um, when I wake up, what? say a little prayer for you. All right, guys. Have a great week. We'll see you on Sunday. Take it easy.